Hello everyone, and today I wanted to do a little bit of a guide on the, something called the Seal of the Architect. Or just an Architect Vols in general, I suppose you can say. So I just have some basic information for you here. So, there are many ways to acquire a Seal of the Architect, uh, but it is craftable, and you can see that it is craftable if you search Seal in JEI. You can see all these seals are here. You have Seal the Executioner. Seal the Hunter, Seal the Architect, which is the one that we're going to be reviewing today. Seal the Explorer, Seal the Devastator, and Seal the Challenger. Uh, now, each of these seals do their own thing, uh, but w basically we're going to be looking at a build of vault and that's what this really is called. Now, build of vaults are very interesting when it comes to vaults, and I'm going to show you some gameplay. I'm going to walk through it very briefly. Then I'm going to show a very practical example using a, a higher level character with some proper gear. Um, this is how you craft it. It costs two steel shards, four per uh, four perfect painite, which is sixteen painite. It costs a volt crystal, an infused eternal soul, which an infused eternal soul is uh, eternal souls, which you get from boss crates, and a volt diamond block. Uh, to get eternal souls, you need to have, have made an eternal using traders and then you can get eternal souls in your boss crates and i think it's like exponential i don't know um and then it uh, for the architect soul in particular it cost a mystery bolt stew uh this is cra this can be crafted also if you go here and you search mystery bolt stew you can see that it's used in here it costs two volt diamonds a hunter's eye two poisonous mushroom a bowl and any given one of the uh, unique gems. It costs three of them. Uh, I don't believe they have to be the same, but just use the same. Um, and you can make a Mystery Volt Stew, and this does have its other uses. You can, um, from the Mystery Volt Stew, you can get various stews right here. But we can talk about that for another day. That's just Volt XP. So for here, what you're supposed to do is that once you make the seal of the architect, whether you get, uh, you can craft it or you can get it uh, by two other ways. Uh, you can get it from something called a loot goblin, which I believe it only appears level 75 plus. I might be wrong, I think it might be level 100 plus. Or you can get it from a uh, treasure chest, from key rooms, or from something that you might actually see, spoiler alert. But there's actually two ways to get treasure rooms. Regardless, you take this seal of the architect and a crystal, and inside of an anvil, you put it in this order and you can see that this normal crystal turns into a normal crystal but build a vault. So now you have a build a vault crystal and with the build a vault crystal uh, you can put catalyst on there so for example if I were to take just any random catalyst I could put it on there easy and freezy uh, uh, I won't it doesn't really matter but yes, you can put Catalyst on there, and I will be discussing some strategies after I go through a brief explanation of what we're about to see. So let's go ahead and go into it. And I'll go ahead and just put that for there now. Alright, so inside of here we have... Oh, I guess this is the first time I've entered a vault in this world. Uh, I got a healing modifier. That's good, generally. I mean, healing is always good. What is that? I don't remember being on this world. Uh, anyways, so you can see here that we have something called a bolt stabilizer, and I'll talk about that in one second, but something I do want to note right down here is this stuff. Now this is very important if you're planning on doing void orb stuff. This is called void, bu uh, void, uh, liquid, and it takes away time from your bolt if you step into it. You can see that right here, time acceleration time 2. So just don't fall down there uh, whenever you step out, just to be wary, it's a five uh, long path. Just make sure you don't fall in there so you don't lose any time. But I would recommend on one of your first architect bolts just to grab a, a bunch of buckets if you have like a dank or something and just like stack them in there. But anyways, let's go ahead and look at this. So basically once you are physically prepared, you right click on this and you can see various things. So we got north, which is minus 15 seconds volt, uh, volt lock, south and east, and you have to pick a direction. I'm going to go ahead and go east, just because it seems the most calm. And also it reduces volt lock. 
bolt lock is very important. You can see that timer right down here. Uh, if you if you just you have to mitigate your time properly. You can also see a progress bar right there. I just remember it's on peaceful. That's kind of funny. Um, you can see the progress bar down here. You want to finish that progress bar. Uh, generally, uh, it's okay to, but you want to. So you saw by when we took east that it gave us multiple different options. Uh, or yeah, we had multiple different options. I picked east. I'm gonna pick east here again, and it gave me a pirate cove room once I did that, right? Well, I picked east again uh, because it added 15 seconds of vault lock for vault gear. And you may be thinking, what's vault gear? Well, it's very, it's very interesting. What you do for vault gear is that it appears in the sky, such as this. Uh, this is very akin to a raid vault, and there are different tiers of vault gear and all that type of stuff. But regardless. You have to find the thing inside the room, and you see this one's a little bit sneaky. And you want to like kind of just gauge how much volt lock time you want to do. So I can either check a Wild West room, which adds no uh, volt lock time, but it doesn't minus any volt lock time. I'm gonna minus some volt lock time because I'm at 25 seconds, and I don't want to wait 25 seconds. I'm okay with waiting 15 seconds for the opolis to be unlocked and that's what the vote lock time is or the voting locked not vote lock so you can't you see you can't press it while it's locked but the moment it becomes unlock I'm able to do that oh what do you know I have three options here and they're both very weird let's go ahead and take a random I'm gonna go south now so basically how random works is that it can pick any option and that quite literally means any option. You can get a positive, you can get a negative. Uh, it's it's usually okay. Uh, sometimes it doesn't matter. Just now I got a biomes room, and you can see that that's just that's just one of these rooms. It's like, oh, okay, yeah, this doesn't matter to me. Uh, something I would say is that it's generally pretty good to bring a pickering with you into one of these vaults. Uh, just because, like, generally speaking, pickerings are really good for nabbing stuff out of the air. And there are quite a few things that can sometimes spawn in the air. As you can see here, I have a 25 second volt lock, and you know, it's not too, too bad. So it means that I have to, at the bare minimum, be in a room for like 25 seconds. I'll go ahead and I'm going to go to this ancient temple room. Uh, I don't think the yellow brick road is going to be good when it comes to loot, but I know the ancient temple has like lots of chests and stuff. And some ores in the middle of the bird. Uh, so you can see in just like the ancient temple room. I won't like go through a looting thing, but there's like some ores in here. And behind this waterfall, there's sometimes chests, but right now it's just mob spawners. And you got various stuff down here, and it's just like, oh yeah, that's good loot. Oh, I guess I'll just get that out of my inventory. So you can see once the top of the bar is gone, you can go ahead and click it, and you can decide. Uh, from here, I only have north, south, and east. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take uh, east because I don't actually like lakes. Sometimes it's just preference. And also, depending on what catalyst you have, you want to take various rooms. For instance, uh, there is a strategy in which I'm going to talk about in a little bit. Uh, but see, you can just like a loot chest or whatever, and I'm just breaking them because I'm in creative. So it doesn't matter. So you're supposed to wait around, you're supposed to loot, and then once you can, you're supposed to click on this, and then you can click on various things. So I'll go ahead and now do south to give an example of the time. So you can see that right now I'm at 20 minutes, and I'm just going to go ahead and wait at the south exit. And once this goes down, you'll see I'll be at like 150, and then it's going to minus, see? at minus 30 seconds. So you have 30 seconds left time. And you might have seen in uh, different scenarios where it added time and I just didn't take it. It's the, it's the exact same principle. You can add or subtract time. Now here you have pixel art, uh, mushroom forest or mushroom forest. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna get the volt lock time to zero. Because I don't really want to take a pixel room. That's 60 seconds of volt, uh, volt lock time and that's that's a big waste unless you get lucky with something that gives you a lot of time. So you just can click that as much as you want. 
And here you got south, which is a crowded times two. Let's go ahead and take that. That just means a bunch of mobs will spawn. Uh, if you're doing soul shard shenanigans, I would suggest taking crowded sometimes. Uh, there's crowded one, crowded times two, and then crowded times four. Each give minus uh, seconds volt lock. See, this one gave minus 20, but the other ones give minus 10 for the singular crowded, and then minus 60 for the crowded times four. I'm going to go ahead and sh uh, show you east here very quickly because I think this is a very important. Prismatic is, uh, is re in relation to Catalyst. Now, with Catalyst, uh, they spawn in the air just like Volt Gear does, as you can see right here. You get cat frags, and let me see, nope, that's also just a catalyst frag. Uh, I'm not seeing one, but you can get entire, ca oh, there's one. You can get entire catalyst. Oh, wow, that's a really good one. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, safe zone, huh? So, yeah, it, I, that's why I generally suggest bringing a pickering so you can grab stuff. Uh, I'll go ahead and take south, but I'm just gonna do this last room, and then I'll show you some gameplay related to this uh, on a higher level, and then after that, or actually before I go into that, I'll go ahead and discuss some strategies and stuff, and then I'll show you some gameplay regarding it. But yeah, so if you want to, I would suggest doing these types of vaults. They are very fun. Oh, that's kind of funny. They are kind of, they are really fun, and they can be extremely lucrative at times. Uh, and I, as I'll explain in the strategy section of this video. Uh, so I think, generally speaking, uh, there's only about four or five strategies that you can go into uh, when getting into a vault. Now, the first of those strategies that I can just think off the top of my head would be a ore mining vault in which you would focus on getting uh, plentiful, rich, and copious. Uh, the second that I can think of is a treasure gilded hoard vault, or just a bunch of gilded chests, in which you would get luck modifiers such as lucky, luckier, and super lucky, and treasure hilled and gorded, or treasure hill, treasure hoard and gilded, sorry about that. There's one where you would focus on luck, or maybe key rooms, in which you would just get the lucky modifiers, or maybe you can mix the treasure hill, uh, gourd, wow, treasure hoard gilded, gorded, uh, treasure hill, uh, I'm just not gonna say those words anymore. There's the one where you have a bunch of gilded chest in which you also get lucky modifiers. There's just lucky modifiers in case that you wanna focus treasure rooms. There's soul shard vaults, in which that you would wanna focus on a uh, mob modifier such as uh, d you want to focus on difficulty modifiers and just grabbing stuff like uh, impossible chaotic crowded just to have as many mobs as possible so you can get as many soul shards as possible and then there's uh, I think that's generally it I don't know why I said five I can only think of those four so upon only having those four you just want to you usually just want to run some of those vaults. I can't really think of another one off the top of my head. And of course there are a bunch of other stuff. When it comes to running architect vaults though, you can either run them raw and just let the vault gods decide what modifiers you come up with. Or you can run them as a treasure one, which I have done before. I haven't done it in a while though. Yeah, that's because I think it's generally speaking better to run them not as treasure. You want to run other stuff as treasure gilded hoard because of how the vault's nature. You don't get access to that many rooms. So what I like to do is I like to run them as CPRs, uh, which is plentiful, rich, and copious. The reason why I like doing that is because you get to pick the rooms which means that you can pick end worlds, you can pick crystal caves, you can pick aquariums, you can pick all this stuff. You just have to mitigate the rest of your time and you can get lots of ores, I mean lots and lots of ores. And that's what I'm going to use as an example for today. I would most suggest uh, doing architect vaults as CPRs. I am going to test something in the future, not right now, of using architect vaults as soul shards farms. 
because as you saw earlier you can get crowded uh, times four and stuff and I just want to see how that works out and how that engagement works so I'll test that in the future and if that works out I'll let you know just make sure to go look in the description every now and again so I'm gonna go ahead and get into this vault if you found all the information that you were looking for today thank you so much for watching but if you'd like to watch the rest of this I will go ahead and just play it through let's see so uh, originally I had planned on recording the entire vault uh, but my fingers had other plans and I accidentally stopped the recording early so you're just gonna have to watch this time 1000 footage uh, speed of me mining this in this mine room uh, which you'll see if you look that I accidentally break my pickering and my paxel uh, because I forgot to bring extras I was so excited to get into the vault and record it and tell you all about it but regardless uh, I'd just like to say very quickly that uh, at the beginning of the last clip, I was talking about uh, catalyst farming, not catalyst farming, uh, using catalyst in general, not just in architect volts when I was talking about the strategies. And I'd like to reiterate my point that uh, if you're going to be doing architect volts and you do have lots and lots of catalysts, I mean, it is catalyst heavy, catalyst expensive at least, I would suggest doing copious rich plentiful volts. Uh, along with some time modifiers, of course, uh, because you want as much time as possible, obviously. Uh, you don't see it in this clip, but earlier I'd find an aqu I found an aquarium room. And aquarium rooms are efficient, of course. Um, it's it's all efficient, really. Uh, you just you just want to get as many ore mining rooms as possible. You can, you can still grab so much shit from these vaults, even if. Uh, you don't get a mine room like I do here, and you see me constantly mining ores here. And if I had not had broken my pickering and my paxel, if I just brought extra pickering or extra paxels or extra pickerings, I would have been able to mine so much more. But I would not have, have been able to mine the entire thing. They were just simply that many ores, uh, and I I was really lucky to find it early on. Uh, so I would suggest if you have volt fruit, maybe bring in some volt fruit if you really want to go all in. Uh, if you have Terror Shatterer, uh, Atomic Disassembler, anything that mines fast, I would suggest Haste 2 Paxels with max haste at your level. Uh, just, you want to mine as much as humanly possible. Uh, I'd like to mention that I did get 8 Echo Ores after this. Anyways, thank you so much for watching, and I genuinely hope that, you know, ours, this can help you. I'm gonna click on this thing one more time. Alright, don't care. Alright, let me look at the hall. So this looks to be about the total that we got from the vault. Now, I am strictly embarrassed because I could have increased this about a billion fold and this was a catastrophic blunder on my part but this cannot be a catastrophic blunder on your part in the future so make sure that you make do with uh get rid of the mistakes that i did when doing one of these bring a billion fucking pickaxes i don't care if they're normal silk touch efficiency five mending the whole deal whatever i don't give a fuck bring a billion pickaxes bring a billion paxels pick rings your poison, or, I don't know, bring a terror shatterer, but then again, that requires botania, and that's like extremely late game, so, I don't know, I'm not complaining, it's fucking eight echo ores, I have fortune a billion, so, yeah, well, regardless, thank you so much for watching, if I think of anything else, so make sure to put it in the description, if you can think of anything else, please let me know, have a wonderful day.